Hi everyone, welcome to Fearless Female Entrepreneurs, where you will receive expert advice and inspiration from 20 fierce feminine leaders and entrepreneurial experts who want to help you supercharge your power as a feminine thought leader and initiate your own powerful rising. I am your host, Jocelyn Mercado, and today I am so excited to be speaking with Kiana Lachey. Welcome, Q. Hi. So excited to be talking with you today. So Kiana Lachey is an, an online business owner with a heavy focus on visibility, content creation, and great customer experiences. Her love for these topics came after failing miserably at MLM companies. She wanted to test or she wanted to find the missing keys to her lack of success in that world. And after tons of research and coaching and a few test clients, she figured it out. Kiana now coaches and consults on everything from creating a successful YouTube channel, setting up a sales funnel, product creation, web design, and weeding out the BS from the online industry. So Q, your topic for today is overcoming adversity with focus and prayer. And I'm so excited to get into this with you. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So could you begin by sharing a, a bit of your story and your journey to entrepreneurship. Yeah, I have one of those like unconventional stories. It's not like, I just had a dream to be an entrepreneur. It was more like I was in college and I did what most college students do and I was drinking and then I got caught driving. And it all went down, it all went downhill from there. Um, you know, living in the country and North Carolina, there's like no public transportation, no jobs. Like we didn't even have a Walmart. <laughs> so I found myself in a very particular situation. And my best friend's mom, who lived in the same neighborhood as I, um, I went to go see her because I knew that she was doing some things online. Or So I just went to talk to her and she was like, go onto Facebook and go in the work from home groups. Like that's not advice that I would give now, <laughs> you know, uh, cause those groups are scam city. But in there I found like this CPA company and it was one of those things where it's like, oh, you know, if you just get like these two points and then you get other people to do it, like you'll make $20. And I remember getting my first $20 check in there and I was sold. I was sold. I was like, I'm never working a job again. <laughs> I ain't gonna have no boss. And not realizing uh, that it is a journey and it is not an easy one. Uh, but that's really like the essential starting point. I was 21 at the time. I'm going 27 now. Is that six years ago? Wow. So, <laughs> you know, that was the start of it. And then obviously moving up and then trying like MLM again, like you said, failed miserably couldn't figure out why other than like bad leadership but like I <laughs> it, it, that does it and I stalked people like not even the people in the same company as I but just like why are these people like why is Ray Higdon and his wife so big you know Tarlis and Cesar Rodri like what are they doing so I was like cyber stalking that's like the real terminology for it and just studying them and watching what they're doing i'm like okay but then by the time i figured it out i didn't even want to be in network marketing anymore i was just like i just want to do these things so everything just like evolved but it started from that one twenty dollar check yeah <laughs> yeah that's amazing and so i know you shared that you were homeless at the time that you were building your business. So can you tell us how, how did you deal with all that? And how, how was that? It was rough. Yeah. It was rough. This might be a, uh, a conversation to have with your daughters, but I was not stupid. I was stupid. And I literally packed up from North Carolina and I moved to Texas to be with my ex boyfriend um and we had kind of had like this long distance relationship for a year and then next thing you know like three months later he's kicking me out <laughs> I was like mm -hmm. okay so now I've got to like do like this whole homeward bound journey back up the east coast and having to kind of like bounce around and one of the first stops I made was to my grandmother's house in Georgia and obviously I had I it, it 
hit me very hard because I wasn't someone that like grew up not having anything like I had everything <laughs> like I had a car before I could drive the car like, mm -hmm. you know so it was, it was like a complete 180 in my life and I'm looking and I'm just like how did I get here and probably like a lot of people's grandmothers she don't have internet <laughs> so you know it's like all right how am I gonna like make something work and I always thank God for this one person in the neighborhood I don't know who they are but I still thank them today because their internet was not password protected <laughs> so you know but I ended up having to do things like when Snapchat was really big, I would like pre-record all the snaps knowing that they weren't going to upload. And then I would have to go in the backyard to connect to that internet yeah. and load them individually. And just even the same thing with trying to, you know, build the websites. And I was just trying to do all of these things. But it was also in that time that I had to push myself so hard that I created my first um, ebook which was 87 pages and very well designed I might say mm -hmm. and you know I built a membership site from scratch you know so it's like I'm in this position it really sucks but I got to figure something out because I spent way too much time crying all the time obviously feeling like super depressed because not only did I get kicked out <laughs> and left <laughs> from you know the boyfriend that Really, at that time, I I just knew I was going to marry this man. Mm -hmm. God save me from that one. Uh, but then again, it's like I really have nowhere to go. And how am I going to get myself out of this? Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Yeah, story about yeah. And so back to your, your topic, right, of returning a focus to that of overcoming adversity with, with focus and prayer. Can you tell us about how you started your prayer practice? So, yeah, it was, it was strange because, you know, my walk with God started long before I started going to church. I've probably only been going to church for a year. But don't tell my past is that. <laughs> um, so it kind of started with the form of journaling, mm -hmm. ironically. And I created this challenge for myself. And someone had recommended to just journal and like just give gratitudes. And I was like, okay, I'll try it. <laughs> okay. At this point, I'll try anything. Um, and I did what I called a project for three. 30 days of love letters. And so I was writing a love letter to myself and then I would write a love letter to someone that I didn't really like know personally, but I felt like they had like some sort of impact. But it was during those times of like writing those love letters to myself that they kind of started to turn more into prayers. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't, you know, like traditionally getting on my knees <laughs> and like, you know, doing the prayer hands, but it was just like, I'm trying to have this conversation with God because I feel like he's trying to get my attention, you know? And that's just how it, it all started. And essentially I'd still do the same thing today. You know, it's like, that's how I'm able to like really connect. I feel like personally. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's such an important message that we don't have to go to church, you know, to be in communication with God, like, you know, God and creator is all around us and, and we can, you know, connect in and, and, and ask for, ask for the answers to our toughest questions and yeah. Oh yeah. In our own way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, well, what obstacles did you overcome and how have you, how have you built your business now since those beginning times um, using focus and prayer? Ooh. Well, first of all, God knows uh, I'm hard headed. <laughs> so like sometimes you gotta be like, uh, I feel like I've been trying to tell you this for like the last couple of months and I'm like, uh, okay, yep. I got it. I got it. I hear you. Um, but you know, for me, there were times where he was like, very present and it was like you just couldn't deny that he had his hand on me you know even at some point I moved in with a roommate um 
we got evicted like <laughs> six months later because I found out she was stealing my rent money and I didn't know. Um, but even in, in that moment, you know, there were times where like things got really hard and I didn't even have money to like go to the dollar store and buy a pack of noodles. Like it was rough. And I would go to bed like hungry, like, and before I would start complaining, cause, because I kept trying to work on my mindset and I'm just like, just give it to God. God's going to take care of it. God's going to take care of it. Obviously with tears <laughs> involved because I'm hungry. And like there are times that I would just wake up to a sale and it's not because I made a sales post, you know, and it's not because like I was doing a bunch of live streams because first of all, I was hungry <laughs> and I didn't have the energy, but somehow somebody found their way to my website and they bought something. And I was just like, okay, so I'm headed in the right direction or, you know, and there are also times where things didn't go very well or as planned again with the, the roommate and the whole eviction thing and finding out that it was because she, you know, wasn't paying our, our landlord. And I'm just like, I feel like I probably dodged a bullet. Like I think, you know, God knew that I didn't need to be in that environment and that this was just a moment that I needed to learn what I needed to learn. And like, now we got to get you up out of here. And this is the way that we're going to do it. <laughs> You're not going to be happy about it right? <laughs> in the it's moment. Like a blessing on the surface, but it is. Right. You know, it's it, it, everything that I've gone through has kind of taught me to slow down and like try to listen to things. Um, even finding my fiance, you know, at some point I was just like, I was on Tinder. I was like, I'm done. You know, like when you've got a, a convict trying to talk smack to you, I'm like, wait a minute. Did he just get out of prison? Um, <laughs> but, you know, like there was this little spot. So I used to walk to Starbucks and I would, I would walk, it would take me 30 minutes to walk there. And I would go every day. Like I was walking through, if it was snowing, there could be a storm outside because I was so dedicated to trying to build my business. And there was like this little cut somewhere that I used to go sit at at night that had like the light over it. And I would like go with my journal. And that's where I would also do like a lot of my prayer journaling. And I remember just saying like, you know what? I think that this is just the time for me to not worry about men and blah, blah. And like, I, it, it no lie in my head, it was just like, one more and I was just like just trying to trying to listen <laughs> I'm trying to listen and my fiance was the next person I connected with wow That's so you know it's 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 been a snowball effect um all the way around and even you know just listening to the direction that he wants me to go you know the whole last year I had a, what I call a season of silence with my business where like I wasn't as vocal, but somehow was still getting clients. <laughs> so, you know, it's like that's pretty incredible in this online space. That's so yes, cool, you know, yeah, yes. I'm just like, huh, okay, yeah, yeah. We can talk. <laughs> Where'd you come from? <laughs> you know. So, but I, I always just always give that to God. You know, it's, it would not, none of it would happen without him yeah yeah it's it's um so beautiful your story in 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 the way that these um yeah these like blessings come through you know mm -hmm. even when you least expect them right and i think when we're when we're listening and when we are in communication with god and really really open to what yeah. is meant to happen to what god wants to happen then that's when those things can come through the key word listen yeah <laughs> like really listen yeah yeah. So what did you focus on the most to build your business? Oh, that's a good one. I got to a point that I think a lot of people get to where we get in this space and at first we're good because we haven't been tainted yet. <laughs> there's some shade <laughs> we haven't been tainted yet because you have all these people that are like you know what I did it this way and this is how you have to do it. and if you don't do it like this you're not going to succeed and blah blah and I think that over time like all of those like seeds just start getting planted into our minds and then we're just like 
we're not who we started off as. And not to say that you shouldn't grow, but I think that if you're going to do it, like grow the way that you want to grow. And I went through that and I'm just like, you know what? No. <laughs> you know, like, you know, the people that say you shouldn't cuss. It's not professional. I'll tell you what. I say what comes to me. <laughs> so sometimes you know, there might be some slip ups and that's just what it is. And, you know, just truly being who I am, um, not worrying about other people. Uh, there was a long period where like, I wouldn't really post about my business on my personal page because my dad was there and I was scared of the judgments and my mother was there and she was the type to comment, you know, like I could say something. If I dropped an F-bomb, she's like, you shouldn't say that. And I'm like, <laughs> you like, you want to delete them? Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, you want to delete them? But those are your parents and then they'll probably call you. Um, <laughs> so, but I got over that. I did. And I was just like, look, <laughs> y'all want to stay here? Y'all going to have to get in line let it go. I'm grown. So, you know, it's just doing that and then recognizing like, you know, again, people are saying that you, you have to market like this. But I was like, you know, video is my jam. Like I'm great doing video. So why am I spending the time trying to learn how to sell through Facebook posts? Because somebody told me that I needed to do that. <laughs> you know, somebody's always, you know, Gary V, if you're not on Snapchat, you're going to fail. If you're not on Instagram, you're going to fail. You don't take your business serious. And I'm just like, okay. I was on all the platforms trying to do all the things because all the people were saying you had to do it. And I'm spreading myself so thin and it's so stressful. <laughs> it's so stressful. And I'm just like, no, like, what do I enjoy doing? Yeah. And that's yes. it. This is so important and it's really, it's really fascinating because this has come up in so many of the interviews. So it's, it's like the core truth that's like running through this whole event. Yeah. Like, don't do something because everybody else says you should do it your way. Follow your heart, follow your soul, you know, do what, do what is right for you because that's what's going to work for you. And that's, what's going to make you happy, you know? Yeah, so. Definitely. And that's what's going to allow the abundance to flow into you. You know, I feel so strongly about that. When we are aligned with our, our true self and, and our true, like, destiny, you know, like what we're meant to be doing. Right. That's when the abundance can really flow in. Right. And then you have fun with it. Yeah. So it's like one of the, one of like, the, I call them rules, but they're not really rules. Um, but I'm just like, if we're not having fun, then what are we doing? Because if you don't enjoy what it is that you're doing, I mean, obviously building a business is not a walk in the park, but if you can at least enjoy it, yeah. then it makes it easier. You know, it's kind of like the people that they do soul cycling with the music and the lights off and the, and it's fun because they ideally are probably never going to go outside with a bike and pedal that hard, <laughs> you know, like around their city, you know? So it's like, let's find a fun way <laughs> to actually do this. I don't ideally want to, but I know that I need to do it. I know it's good for me. And it's, yeah. It, yeah. Makes it easier. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, well, so how, how have you shifted your mindset through, you know, through this journey? Cause it, and it, we've talked about this too, you know, in some of the other interviews, it is such a journey to be an entrepreneur. Like you are being called to level up to your highest self. And that includes not just all the business, business aspects of things, right. But it's a, like a huge personal growth journey and a spiritual journey, um, for many people. So how have you shifted your mindset and up-leveled um, during these times of adversity? <sighs> My mindset probably took like a whole 180. <laughs> <laughs> and it needed to. And I, one of the things that I try to always go back to is like, get in your CEO role. Get in your CEO role. Like, how would you act? How would you think? How would you behave? Um, you know, shifting my mindset. And I think that this is a really big one for me. It, it really came down to 
one, learning how to respond and not react. Because <laughs> uh, if you knew my mother, uh, um, you know, that's where I get it from. And I'm like, I can't go on like this. And a lot of it was also looking in the mirror because there were things that were happening and it's very easy for us to like point the finger. You know, it's like, oh, well, this client, you know, didn't uh, pay their invoice or they signed their contract, but, you know, they, they left in the second month and now I have a whole month uh, that I had money accounted for that's not going to come in. And I'm not saying like, take responsibility for the client's actions, but sometimes it's during those moments that it's like, oh, okay, you know what? How would the CEO act? You don't want to work with me? That's fine. You signed a contract. So I'm going to send you an invoice. Uh, I'm going to need you to pay this. You know, and it's, it's, it's not an easy conversation to have, but I think that the first time you have it and then like it kind of gets people in line. It's like, oh, okay. So she's not playing. <laughs> it's like, I'm not. I have bills to pay. Um, you know, it's stuff like that. And then not getting, here's a, big one and I actually I actually did a video about this and it's on my YouTube channel and on my Facebook page but I see a lot of people especially on Facebook that get triggered by the most simple things and it, it can it baffles me because I'm like how do you have the energy to be so pissed off about someone adding you to their Facebook group just leave the Facebook group. It ain't that deep. There are little hungry kids in Africa starving. You ain't, you ain't vocal about that. But you mad because someone added you to their Facebook group without your permission. How dare they? And I'm just, I just, again, I see it now. I'm just like, are y'all bored? Y'all need something to do? Y'all need a right. hobby? Like, it takes a lot of energy. Like, they could take that energy and put it toward. Right. Really good. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, and, but those are the things. I don't think people look at themselves so like, why am I so triggered by this? Like, the Facebook group. You know, like, that's one of the, I think, important shifts also is just, learning to not be so triggered by whatever. And then if you find yourself being triggered by it, then remove yourself from the situation. You know, like there are people who get triggered by someone's posts. Unfriend them. Why do you now need to go make a whole post about how you saw the post and I can't believe someone on my timeline, girl, Stop. <laughs> it ain't that deep. You know, nobody came and killed your dog. So, you know, that's, that's one of those, <laughs> that's yeah. a big thing. And then I think that the biggest, the biggest of all the shifts really came when I stopped. I was about to, I was about to throw some shade. I'm not even going to, I'm not going to go there. I stopped listening to the cutesy people online that try to talk about mindset. And the ones that essentially would just tell you, journal, just journal, just give your gratitude. You know, that's all you, just be abundant. And I'm like, okay, I've been doing this for a year and I'm still homeless, so something ain't working. And <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it was really learning that I had to do the dirty work, you know, like, if I were married and my husband did not support my business, journaling ain't going to fix that. Mm -hmm. Having that hard conversation is what's going to fix that. Coming to a resolution. You know, I've had to set boundaries with people, especially my mother. And I'm sure we can all talk about mothers all day. <laughs> we might need a whole separate call for that. <laughs> you know, but it's like, having those set boundaries because there are people that don't respect your time or, you know, that. So, and all of these things, you, you learn to also empower yourself. So it's like, you know, if we have a scheduled call, you got five minutes to reach out to me, you know, like there's a difference between like, maybe you had another call and it's running behind, but it's not hard to send a message. Yeah. Hey, finishing up. I'm going to be just a bit late. 
that's fine. I can, I can re- understand it and I respect that a lot more. You just not showing the fuck up. <laughs> it's not about to work for me. You got five minutes um, <laughs> and I'm leaving. And no, I don't care if it's been 15. I'm not hopping on to talk to you, you know? Um, and it's the same thing with my mother, you know? She, <laughs> keep going back to my mother. Can y'all tell us a big one for me? You know, it's setting that boundary to like, I'm setting the time to work until five. You can call all you want. I ain't talking to you till after five, (laughs) you know? And because my mom was the type that she got so comfortable with feeling like she could call and talk to me in the middle of the day when, and now two hours have gone by. And my mother is a very, and I love my mother. She's very negative and she's set and her dramas and so she calls me with them and I have to protect my space you know because I want to be happy and I want to feel whole and it's difficult to do that when obviously it's a parent and they're bringing that into your life and it's like I can't be responsible for the drama that you create in your life I love you and I will love you after the day you die but I have to take care of me. I cannot, I'm not available. I told her that last week, mommy, I'm not available for this. Now, obviously that didn't go over very well, (laughs) but I still stood up for myself. And I think it's very hard to do that. You know, it's, it is hard to do it. You know, it's in, again, doing all of the dirty work and I've had to go and I've had to heal relationships and I've had to remove myself from certain environments. It's, it's all the hard stuff that got me to really change my mindset and put myself in a position to actually feel abundant, to actually be happy all day, like the whole day, <laughs> you know, like, and to not, you know, feel triggered by things. And I'm just like looking at them like, okay, yeah. You know, it's like getting to that point. Yeah. Yeah, and you know that the, the um, I, what stands out to me about what you're saying here is that you know we really do get to choose, and and there yes there are obstacles and there are adversity, and also we get to choose how we're going to respond, we get to choose how we want to set our boundaries, mm-hmm. we get to choose what you know which people we're going to allow to affect us in certain ways or not, and it is hard with a parent or a, you know close family member that's it's hard. But we do, we get, ultimately get to choose, you know, how we're, how we're going to create this thing. Of yeah. Our life. So, yeah. yeah, it's difficult. Like even my best friend, I feel almost bad because, you know, we've kind of hit separate roads, you know, and I came on this journey when we were both 21 and I'm trying to build my business and she got baby daddy drama. And I'm just like, I love you. You can't call me no more and talk to me about which baby daddy did. <laughs> you know it's and it sucks because it in this online space you already begin to feel lonely you know it's not like all your neighbors are entrepreneurs and then you've got like you know you can kind of geek out and it's like oh yeah well, look at this landing page or like I my fiance will come on like honey look at this landing page I built and he's like it looks good honey like, he's just like, that's, that's the most I'm going to get from him you know and it, it's it's lonely in this space and when you have to start even cutting people out, you know, that's, it's just make, yeah, making those, those tough decisions, but it's always going to be for the better because you can't, you can't rise if you've got all this heavy baggage. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it is really hard. And I think too, when we step onto this path of being an entrepreneur, that it just naturally happens that some relationships need to fall away because you realize it's just not aligned with who you really are anymore. And uh, yeah, yeah. And that's really hard. Sad. Yeah. But we're doing it. We're making it happen. Yes. Yes. And you make new friends online. Yeah. And you build your new tribe. Yeah. You know, it's like, but it happens. I've made friends online and now like they're coming to my wedding. You know, it's like, I would have met these people here you know, there's just some people online you'll have such strong connections with and you'll build true, genuine friendships with. And 
it'll happen for everyone. Yes. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Q, for all that you have shared here. It's been so much fun talking with you and hearing more about your journey. And so I know you have a really awesome free gift for everyone that is the Shift Your Shit Guide. So would you like to share a little more about that? <laughs> yes. So ironically, this was going to be a PDF. <laughs> and right before I was going to have it created, I just had this, this voice in my head, um, which is probably God, and he was like, make it a course. And I was like, oh, you just put me to work today, huh? So... <laughs> So it's like an entire mini course where, again, like I mentioned, you know, a lot of the shifts that are going to be made are not going to be simply through journaling and simply through giving gratitudes and simply through EFT tapping. All those things are great, but you've got to do the dirty work first for all of these other things to actually like work for you. So I go through all of these things and I really challenge you to set these boundaries. And we talk about healing relationships and we talk about, you know, you having negativity towards the things that you want to change and how we can shift that. And through all of it, you know, I want to be there with you step by step. Um, you know, it's not just a go through the course, watch the videos and then like, don't do the work. Like I'm like, no, there's homework. <laughs> it's homework so now that you've watched this video you gonna need to do this and I want to hold everyone accountable to that because I know for facts that these are the things that need to happen maybe not for everyone but for a lot of people and I've actually had my clients go through this where like they come in for business coaching and they can build their business and we start going down the rabbit hole and I'm like okay so your relationship with your parents is fucked up. So we need to start working on that. <laughs> you know, you're, this yeah. is not right. So we need to work on that. You don't actually have boundaries set. So we need to start working on that. And then we can move forward. Yes. Yes. It's, it's so if you want to do the dirty work, I will be there with you. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for offering that. So it's a mini course. And I just put the link to claim that in the chat here for those who are attending live. And if for those who are watching this as a recording, just scroll down a little bit below this video screen and you will see the link to claim your free gifts right there. So, yeah, so I want to open this up for Q&A from the audience. So everybody, I always, it takes a little while every call for everybody to warm up a little bit. So I always say, don't be shy, raise your hand, <laughs> talk with us. So if you would like to ask you a question, you can either look for the hand icon, raise your hand, and we can bring you over either on video or on audio um, to talk with us. Or you can also put your question in the chat and I will read it from there. So go ahead, anybody has any questions at all for Q. And I'm going to read, we have a couple comments in the chat here from Ibtisam. I love it, Ibtisam. I love your, I love your comments over here. Um, a theme for the next symposium, motherhood. Yes. <laughs> that yeah. is a topic that needs to be talked about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's, it's our tribe, yes. Okay. So as always, everybody, don't be shy. I know we always, I, I like call for, you know, people to raise their hand. Nobody raised their hand. Nobody raised their hands. And then when I say, okay, we're going to end the call now, then everybody yeah. has a question. So ask, ask all now, the questions. <laughs> ask all the questions. Yeah. This is your chance. Let's see. Yeah. All right. No questions so far. All right, last call. Last call for questions. Let's do it. Well, let me ask you, Q, is there, oh, here we have Ibtisam is raising her hand. All right, let me bring you over, Ibtisam. All right, hi, Ibtisam. I can't see you, but I think we should be able to hear you. Yeah, you should be able to hear me. I'm sorry you can't see me. Uh, but uh, I think I just came on because I did ask the question, actually. I think uh, 
just more tips because I think uh, being a couple counselor myself over the years, it's very easy to, you know, not, you know, the sort of respond versus react business. Um, and it's, um, I think it, it just, just kind of, you know, have more tips because it's easy to, you know, we can sort of respond when there are no real attachment styles, but, and triggers as well. But it's so, it's, it's just so much harder to do it with, you know, people, you have different attachment styles too. So I was just wondering if you could shed more light on that, because you did mention that that was one of your, um, you know, turning points that you, and can you just share that? That would be great. Yeah. So it wasn't easy. <laughs> yeah. It was not easy for me. And it really started when, you know, again, making that journey back up the East Coast. <laughs> and I ended up having to go to my mother's. Um, it all just comes back to mother. And <laughs> my mother is, is very reactive. Like she is very reactive person. And it's, it, she does this thing where she likes to, she likes to nitpick at you. She likes to poke at you, you know, and it's like, you could be a sleeping bear. <laughs> and I was that mouthy 15 year old at one point. So I was very reactive and I felt like because I was put in a particular environment that she technically controlled, that I was forced to have to learn how to not react because I could have just went off. But she would say things and then I would just be like, mm -hmm. okay. And it annoyed her so much. And I think that it's, when you have those types of people, it's really good to pay attention to how they react to you not reacting. This is how I found out my mother's a narcissist. <laughs> um, you know, she would get upset that I wouldn't react. She would just be like pissed off about it. And, but over time, like, as I just continue to do it, it's like less and less things just really bothered me. So I was just like, okay, I don't need to like, react to this like this is just it is what it is yeah yeah definitely it's such an important thing to yeah to learn and to really you know live into and embody as we go forward on this journey because we there's so many things you know being an entrepreneur there's so many things we can be, be triggered by and and um you know from reactions from audience and all kinds of different stuff that we see going on. So, yeah. Yes. Yes. And clients. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I got a few stories from the clients too. I'm just like, did you really just, okay, I'm going to take a moment. <laughs> I'm going to go make me a cup of coffee. I'm going to come back to this after I've chilled out, which obviously doing it that way is a lot easier than when someone's like in your face. Cause when it's online, it's like, okay, I can like step away from this. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times when it's like someone in your face and you're just like, <sighs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Don't go off. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Yeah. Is that helpful if to some? Yeah, it's, it's helpful. I think, as, as, as I already said, motherhood could be just a whole different... I'm, I'm not kidding, Jocelyn, really. Just just start working on the next symposium on that one. <laughs> Get right to work for that. Loads to contribute. Right there, it's, it's <laughs> and I, I think that would be a brilliant idea because, you know, motherhood is just sort of so glorified and everything is about, you know, like this thing kind of say mother of all battles and motherhood and, you know, there's, there's so many dark shadow aspects of motherhood. And, you know, when you, when you I mean, again, I, I'm going back to my own professional and personal experience of life, that, you know, when you're in a child, uh, and this sort of goes back every generation. So, you know, each mother who has not got her inner child needs met. The legacy just continues. And at some point, one of us, or some of us kind of just say, you know, the buck stops with me and you, you start changing the course. Mm -hmm. but uh, that is exactly what you know what you were saying as well it's, it's a tough one yeah I agree and that's why again it's it's so important to just get yourself together because even now like my mother never had a wedding mm -hmm. so who is she trying to live through right now 
<laughs> you know, I'm just like, she's like telling me like, you know, you, you and Ethan can't have a sweetheart table. You, you're not supposed to do that. Wait, what? Who's, wait, who's getting married? What do you mean? We don't have a sweetheart table. I know you can't sit with us. Like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's all the things that, and she has not healed a lot of things, you know, and it's so evident um, how she's treated me and how she's treated my sister, who's 18. When my mother was a little girl, she was molested by her cousin. And I did not know this until I was an adult. Um, mm. And it's so evident now that I know, like, why she treated me and my sister the way that she did. Like, my sister was 16 and couldn't walk three you know, houses down to the stop sign by herself without her twin brother having to go with her. And I'm just like, mom, you do realize like she's about grown. <laughs> like she's about grown. I think she can walk to the stop sign to meet her friends by herself. But she just, my mother never healed through her own stuff. And she just always projected those things onto us, which then causes us, again, having it at, as a, a young child, now we start to adapt and adopt these ideologies yeah. and they're not healthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ibtisam. Have a great day. You too, Karen. Okay. Thank you, Q. Yes, of course. Okay, we have another hand raised here. Oh. Lenora, did you want to raise your hand? Oh, okay. It looked like it went away for a second. Okay, Lenora, I'm going to bring you over. Okay, yes. welcome. Hi, Lenora. Hi. Hi. I don't know if you can see me or not, but I know. No, we can't see you, but we can hear okay. you. So that's good. <laughs> um, you know, I, I came on a little late. Um, there was actually smelling here, which it never does, so it's really kind of interesting, but... Um, that's another here, another. So I, when I came on, you were talking about how, you know, in, um, uh, and I, I'm, 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 I don't know if you answered this earlier or not, but in some of your adversity where, uh, there was just a phrase that you said, you know, you'd been doing this a year, whatever your business was, and it hadn't been working. And, um, so what changed, what boundaries, I know you set some boundaries, but what actually changed to shift your business into actually a working business? What did you do? What steps did you take to actually focus, not just setting boundaries, because that's, that's such a great, fantastic idea. I mean, it's such a, a necessary thing. And, and I work with that. I deal with that, deal with that every day. But the but the, the, the actual steps, what did you go from being maybe homeless, like you said, um, to actually getting the business to work? Did you change your business? Did you change your mindset to, to change the, the goal of the business? Did you um, sit down and go, okay, what isn't working here? And what do I need to do to get it working? I, what was the shift? What was the... What was the um, to actually get it to where you can start paying it. <laughs> it. I guess if that makes any sense, is that, yeah. Is that a, yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So that's where, again, everything to me is always this miraculous journey because, again, I was able to book clients with barely showing up. And, I was, and it was amazing to me. Um, now, here's the thing. When you're homeless, you 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 in hustle mode you know so it's just Mm -hmm. like like you just trying to get it that day rent due next week um and I think that for me it was having a lot of faith that things were going to work out and I stopped being so attached to having specific outcomes to what I was creating and um for example, one of those things would be, uh, Jocelyn, you know, um, being contracted through like, you know, Sunday Leonard Doozy to, to coach YouTube. Uh, that was not a direct thing. All that was, was me being in a small Facebook group and I would post like my little YouTube tips and nobody <laughs> was trying to work with me. But 
Sunny had made a post, and I was not friends with Sunny on Facebook either. But she was just like, does anybody know anybody that's good at YouTube? And the admin of that small group tagged me. Hmm. And thus, here I am today. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's, it's not being so attached. And it, ironically, in the work, the same thing, even with my fiance, who, you know, graduated, got his master's and was applying for jobs, not getting them. And all of a sudden, you know, he just gets an email from one of the local universities that's like, hey, you know, someone mentioned that you would be a, a great candidate for this position. And we don't know who, <laughs> to this day, we don't know who did it. But it, it's like, it's just the snowball effect of you just doing the actions and then like just having faith that everything's going to work out. And it don't always work out the way you want it to work out. But there were many a times I was putting stuff out there and I am impatient. I'm like, they didn't buy in two days. This program sucks. <laughs> you know, it's like, let's scrap the whole idea. Um, and then I also started having the courage to charge more, way more. Like when I first moved in with the, the, the um, janky roommate, that's what we're going to call her because she doesn't deserve a name, stealing people's rent. I moved in. I did not have enough money to move in with her, like to pay her for the whole month. I was like, I, I could do two weeks. <laughs> and I moved in with less than a hundred dollars to my name. And I still had to go buy toiletries. I had to go buy food. And after I moved in the next day, I sat on the porch and I cried. And I was just like, how am I going to pay rent in two weeks? And it's like, really sad to be in that position and then like I you know I didn't know everything that there is to know about building a successful business you know like I didn't know how I could just make six figures I was just trying to make enough money to pay rent in two weeks and this was in a January and I closed out January just barely skimming by in February, which ironically the shortest month of the year, I some I got it together. I actually charged more for my coaching. I actually had the audacity to ask for the sale. Um, I stopped doing discovery calls. That was one of the things I think that also helped. So I don't know if you've ever read the book, The Prosperous Coach, um, but I'm all about doing the unconventional things that everybody tells you not to do. So everybody says to do a discovery call. You got to do a discovery call. You got to do a complimentary call, blah, blah. So I was like, nah, Steve, his name is not Steve Stockman. Oh, Lord, forgive me. It's Steve something. But, but he says to coach for two hours. And I was like, okay. And I tried it and it worked. And I get the concept because it's like, if you are that good at what you do, two hours ain't nothing. And then especially like when you have like that first initial call with people, they, uh, there it is, Steve Chandler. Thank you. <laughs> Don't tell him I forgot his name. Um, you know, they, they open up so much that like you're really not coaching for two hours, but that was one of the shifts that I make. And I still kind of do that. No, I still do that to this day. I don't do like discovery calls. It's just like, let's have a conversation. So I, I, I really purged myself of a lot of the things that people would teach and again, say that like you had to do, like you have to do this, you have to do the discovery calls. And it's like, no, I just like connecting people. I like to talk to people, you know, cause a lot of times people also, you know, when they're choosing a coach, they also want to work with someone that they feel connected to, that they like, you know, like I don't want to be so cut and dry and hard about stuff. Like, okay, so over the next 12 weeks, you and I are going to sit like, no, like here's what we're going to do. Cause I also recognize my coaching style and I am best at coaching through conversation. I don't even know if that answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> no, it did. It actually, it did. It did. So yeah, I've been trying to, I, I'm actually there. I'm, I'm to the point of, 
the, the savings are completely gone and rents are due in two weeks. Uh, you know, you're like, okay, there's nothing there to pay it. And what do we do now? And the clients, okay, okay, faith, faith, <laughs> it's going to work out. Um, positive thinking, but then, you know, the, the fear comes back and it takes mm -hmm. over and then it just collapses down. You go, okay, whew, that stops the abundance get it off that that's it's all faith again it's okay it's going to work out yeah and then uh, you know you have to wait for the um it's the waiting and the hoping and the, and the praying and the abundance and the overcoming <laughs> yeah and i i will say that i think another thing that ended up working well for me is i got good at copywriting but i don't like calling it copywriting because it's not like i took like a copywriting course. I just recognize that people are selfish. So I made <laughs> so I made everything about them, you know? So like, yeah. I know like the basic concept of like, don't talk about the features, talk about the benefits, but it's just like, I started to think about what is really at the core of what they want. And that's what I would talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you know, if I wanted to get someone to, to buy like my YouTube course, I'm not going to say, you know, oh, well, video marketing is, is taking over and it's the best way to get yourself seen in front of your target market. Like, I'm not going to say that. What I'm going to say is, I know you're tired of being on social media all damn day and this is not the life that you desire to have. I don't think any of us ever got into this and was like, I want to market on Facebook all day, you know, like, but that's what ends up happening. <laughs> you know and it's like getting to that core like yeah so you want to take your kid to the park because it's teacher work day but you've got to do this you've got to do this live stream on Facebook and you got to come over here and you've got to make sure that you do your free post on Instagram today and then you got to make sure that you write your email so you can send it like you know like all the things and it's like okay and that's how I end up connecting with people because it's like at the true core of what it is that you want I understand that yeah. Yes, really. That's really good. I love that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, of course. That, that does help. That does. That does answer. That does. That does, that's actually exactly what I um, have been. Um, actually, and and see the, the very weird odd thing is that, um, on the core level, I'm actually at peace. I I do feel like things are going to work out. I, and but then, when I look at the reality. It's not my reality. <laughs> I don't know how the reality is going to match up with how, why. I feel like I should be panicking. I'm, I'm not. Uh, when, I, when I look at the reality and I, I look logically, I start to panic. So I stop. I try to, to go out away from the reality um, or logically because um, my feeling is that things are going to work out. I don't know how, I don't know why, I don't know. And that's not for me to know. I just need to okay. remember that things do work out if I stay positive. And I, I very much appreciate all that you've said because mm -hmm. that is, um, and I, I love how you said um, you were you were on uh, things that you were posting and, and on YouTube and somebody just posted, tagged you. And, and so that you weren't expecting that. No. How, you know things do happen so i'm i'm you've got I'm this. putting it out there that yeah i'm i, I need to do you you've that that was very helpful actually yes. so it's it yeah it's it's amazing how these things kind of work out before my fiance and i moved here we actually got scammed <laughs> we were trying it was like the the um the lease was almost up where we were at and we found this place and it's like, oh my God, is this too good to be true? But I was like, I know better than to think that. <laughs> and then like we got scammed out of like over a thousand dollars. And this is where I say like, just, oh God. Okay. Yeah. I felt that w years ago when I went and I was doing the visualizations and stuff, you know, instead of fixing my shit, um, <laughs> I was talking about how like, you know, I want a house by the beach and blah, blah, blah. And then like we got evicted and then we're like, okay, so we've got like less than a month to find some, not just find somewhere to go, but now we're out over a thousand dollars for a deposit. And we found this place that we're in. I am right across the street from the bay 
And then if I walk down the street, there's the beach. And I like, and I, it didn't hit me when we moved here, but as I sat outside one day reflecting, I'm just like, this is where I was supposed to be at. So like God kind of blocked that. Like he was like, oh, wait, no, you just trying to live there because it's cheap. This is where I'm going to put you. Oh. And again, it's going to be painful. <laughs> and you're not going to be happy with me. <laughs> but it's like, it, cause it's scary. You know, again, when you, you're getting scammed and your lease is bad up and you're like, where are we going to live? Where are we going to live? But I think that I ended up just kind of every day just saying, it's going to work out. 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 And it was funny because I had more faith than my fiance and he actually grew up going to church. <laughs> I was just like, um, what are you doing here? Like, he's like freaking out. And I'm like, honey, God going to take care of us. Don't take care of us. I tied this month. No, let me stop. Let me stop. I can relate. <laughs> oh, I yes. know you'll be okay. You'll you'll be okay. <sighs> yes, it's it, it it will be. I'm I, I do have very I'll be confidence in um and um, I, I, it's, I've never been let down before. Um, been through some pretty darn, <laughs> been very interesting life. Not what I planned. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you make for the best lessons. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> What I thought right. was going to be when I started out <laughs> many, right. many, many years ago. But um, I, I um, never been let down before. This is, I think, one of the um, <clears throat> newest ventures I've ever tried, and it's it's been uh, a definite learning experience um, and perseverance and not giving up mm. and going another route. Um, Dropping everything, I you know, going back to the corporate world and and saying, okay, I'm just going back to what I used to do because that's safe and that's secure and I can do that and I, I you know, I and uh, <laughs> I you know that's um, it's scary not to do that. That's definitely it takes um, great courage not to do that. It takes yes, um, not to not to. Um, yeah, I'm I'm actually almost fifty, <laughs> so that that uh, takes a lot of not to not to go back. But I I appreciate um, your story. So uh, and and mm. expression, and I, I'm definitely going to go through your course because I I think that's um, uh, anything I can learn and and help me get through this part. <laughs> yes, I'm here for you. It's oh, not. I it's, that. It's, it's not easy. It's it's not. But neither is winning the Olympics. That is a horrible <laughs> example. Because <laughs> <laughs> you've got to train really hard. I, I was trying to make the connection. I'm okay. <laughs> we do. We edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say when we, you know, Lenore, when you, when you have the courage to do something really scary, um, you are, you know, you are opening yourself up to a whole, whole new world of possibilities. So trust in that. Really, really trust in that. Well, I mean, let me see if I can get this, this, this video to start working just a minute so that I don't, I'm not just a blank screen. I feel bad. <laughs> no. Just a minute. It yeah. might work. I'd love to see your smile. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's early morning. Let's see if I can. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, it's so bright here. See, that's and, good. Oh, hi, Lenora. Okay. See you. Yeah. <laughs> I can move over a little bit here so it's not so bright. But my, uh, everything is a mess. <laughs> it's a really long window. And I love it. Yeah. And it's it's so bright that I know it makes everything. There we go. Maybe I can move. There we go. Over. It's perfect. I love big windows. Yeah. yeah it's, 
so anyway, I, I appreciate uh, the inspiration and the, the message and um, mm. everything that uh, that's I, I've enjoyed this whole conference, but I've really appreciated and, and uh, <clears throat> everything that you've shared and given today. No, I appreciate and, you. And your answer, because that's, it's definitely a, a, a leap of faith to do this. This is not um, an easy thing. I think I've, I've kind of stepped my toe in a couple of times when I was in the corporate world, and, and it always fell, fell, um, fell apart, uh, never really took hold. And then um, I, I jumped in a couple of, uh, well, jumped in and forced in, actually, last year uh, by uh, reasons uh, from my old job, um, and that I didn't ever think it could happen. Mm -hmm. And um, so I thought, you know, I'm just going to do this now. I'm just going to just jump right in and I'm going to do it full born. And oh, yeah, now it's, now it's um, coming to the point where I'm like, okay, I've got to overcome, overcome the fear of just not. I, I knew it was right. I knew it was right. I knew I was doing the right thing, but now I'm second guessing myself. Now I'm second guessing what I was doing and, and um, trying to keep that positivity. And I'm trying to find a way to keep that positivity and keep that, keep the faith and keep the um, momentum of it's, it's going to go okay. It's going to be okay. And the right people will be there because I'm an open that right so that I'm open to them yeah and so that's why I very much appreciate this because that is what that is exactly what um, I think when when we have the negativity we stop the the flow to us I can you know we stop the ideas and we stop the, the um, I think we just stop it and I, I don't want to have that blockage I want to have it out there that that um, uh, uh, I can receive <laughs> the abundance. I can receive, um, uh, and and it's okay. But then I think, okay, well maybe I'm supposed to be doing something else, and uh, and so I start second guessing myself. But um, and so that's why I very much I I I I, I wanted to ask you that question and, and why. Getting your input is so very helpful to me. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank what you so is, much, Lenora. Yeah. Is it one yet? Oh, yeah, I and I think much. that yeah, definitely Q's free gift is going to be really, really awesome for you too because that those, like what you're talking about, those blocks and that, you know, those beliefs that are sometimes like working in the background to hold us back when we address those and look straight at them, which I'm sure you're already doing, but I know you'll, you'll do even more of that in that, in her, in her course. So yeah, I think that will also really help. It's all the emotions in there. All the emotions. I, let, I, 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 yeah, I let it out. I let it out in that course. I didn't outline it or anything. It was just like, I always say I just prefer to just keep it as real as possible just open because that's how I best teach yeah well thank you so much Lenora for coming on and for being visible and um and sharing your story with us too lots of love to you and and thank yeah, you lots of luck on your journey yes. many blessings on your journey thank you thank you very much yeah thank you Okay, so Q, I know we're we're a little over the hour. There's one more person with their hand raised. Okay. You, uh, is your does your schedule allow one more? Yeah. Question? Okay. All right. Thank you. So Pamela, let me bring you over for our last question for the day for Q. There we go. Hi Pamela. Is it still not letting me unmute you? Just like last time. So if you can unmute yourself, that'd be great. Is 
happened last time? Another interview. Oh, there we go. Ooh. Okay, cool. I don't cool. know why it does that. Yeah, it's odd. So, How are you, Pamela? Good, good. And Jocelyn knows me <laughs> 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 and my situation. Um, so I really don't have a question, but I just have a more of a comment for you and Lenora because I really appreciate this because as Jocelyn knows, I'm in the same situation as with you guys. You know, I am, um, and as you can see, I'm older, so you would think I would have it together. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> and, but I did, I did teach for a long time, so I'm kind of like, you know, Lenora, I, it, I just had to get out of it because of the way that public school is and all that. So I left an environmental study, you know, whole big story and things I've done. But my thing to you and Lenora is what I really appreciate is how you've gone and which I am right now going through. I'm on day 110. I have no house, no place to stay. Well, I am, am staying with some friends right now, but you know, I, I was kind of in your same situation, same, same with Lenora, you know, living out of my car in a tent in the desert for three months. <laughs> now I'm with friends and luckily I'm bartering, you know, I'm working in their house as I live with them. So I just, I like the idea that, you know, your faith and how that really brings you through because that is what I'm going with. I just want, you know, Lenora to know too. I'll have some, I mean, I had some plan to Two days ago, I was going to have a place, and now it's up in the air. Mm. So, I'm, you know, I just have to go with this is divine timing, and it's going to work out when it works out. And and I just, you know, kind of want to let Lenora know that too, that you just got to feel it through and not project this is what's going to happen, and this is how it's going to be. So I just want to say I appreciate you and I appreciate, you know, everything that you've said today. So. Oh, thank you, Pamela. <sighs> Pamela, that made me tear up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'd be okay. You know, it, 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 it's one thing when I've gone through things, right? but it's, it always hurts my heart when I see other people you know, having a struggle and I can feel that you have a, a great spirit and obviously you're a kind hearted person. And, you know, it's, I think any of us, it's never a good feeling to see someone in their worst hour, you know, but I appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, and I think, you know, kind of like you, my experience is going to bring out more because I, you know, I'm like you. I, I was out in the desert, and luckily I found spots to live free. Otherwise, I never would have made it. But, you know, there was times when I would be cold in my tent, and I'd be like, if you would have eaten well, you would have had the, you know, the warmth and the energy. But at that time, I didn't have as much money to go get food. Yeah. So, you know, it's, so I, I feel that, and I, like I said, I, I felt well, Nora, you know, but I, I really think it, it, it works out when it works out. And you got to have that faith and not, not have that fear and it'll work. So I just want to, yeah, thank you. Yeah, and Pamela, you, you are on such a journey. You are going to yeah. be such amazing things as you emerge from this no yeah, and i and like i said i i know it's gonna work and i just have to you know have that faith so, oh, I... so thank you <laughs> yeah thank you pamela for coming on for being visible too and and sharing yeah thank you so much lots of love have a wonderful yep. day yep you too thanks Oh, it's been so powerful. Thank yeah. you so much, Q.
Yeah, I'm gonna, I feel like I have to go pray for everyone now. Mm -hmm. Oh, that last one hit me hard. Yeah, and I can just, um, yeah, I can feel, I can feel your love for everybody so strongly. It's, um, it's really moving. It's really powerful, and and the people who are who are watching too. Um, yeah, it's. Yeah, you know, I, I just think that everyone deserves to live their best life and have all the things that they desire. But I'm still desiring for a French bulldog. <laughs> just leave hints all over the house no but you know it's I know that everything that we go through is meant to shape us you know and I always have to remind myself that and I remind my clients and it's just like everything is just always easier said than done you know to accept the moment that you're in and it can get hard when you're trying to look to the future and it feels like you're not moving forward. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's when our faith is tested the hardest. It's like, so I am rooting for everyone. I really am. Yeah. And I, and I, so truly believe that you know if you're on this call you have a, a serious mission um, to do really good work in the world and you're yeah. going to get that support and you're going to get that guidance and protection so yeah really really believe in that yeah it's so important oh wow <laughs> Wow. That took a turn. <laughs> that took a turn. <laughs> oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. Ah. Thank you so much, Q, for all, oh. all that you've shared and for all of yes. the inspiration that you have given to all of us here today. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very appreciative to have, have been here, you know, <sighs> even if I could help one person. So... Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're this female entrepreneurs. That's what we're doing here. Courage. Yes. Courage and tears. (laughs) Yeah, they go together. (laughs) They they really do. (laughs) Yeah. Oh. All right. Well, thank you again for having me. And I, I, I had a good time and I enjoyed this. And thank you to the lovely ladies that hopped on and you know spoke and they've all just really inspired me oh yeah me too me too yeah yeah and so everyone who's on live come back and join me again at 1 p.m new york time we'll be talking to kendra thornberry about the power Mm -hmm. of money to change the world so yes yeah (laughs) All right. Well, thank you so much again, Q. I hope you have a wonderful day and wonderful weekend coming up and hope we get to talk again soon. Yes, you as well. And we will. Yes. (laughs) Thank you. Bye. Bye.